is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. Excuse me as I rock on. That's Went Away by Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane out of Martinez, California. That's out of the Cut and Dry album. Check them out at DorothyLaneMusic.com. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. It's Ruo. How are you? If you are a new listener, welcome to the podcast. If you are a return listener, welcome to the podcast. Appreciate you coming back. Yeah, what's cooking, y'all? What's cooking? Just gonna go right into it. Well, <laughs> um, simple and easy. Um, two things. Um, you know, the family, well, my wife and I, we... We shop at our local Costco and we'll pick up every once in a while. We'll pick up a big old pork shoulder roast. It's pretty big. And um, I'll take it home. I'll cut it into portions. And and um, what do you call it? Uh, you sort of uh, vacuum back it. I mean, pressure seal. I am thinking all these other terms. I'll vacuum pack the portions and stick them in the freezer. Um, about once a week, the kids will have pulled pork. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take one of those small portions and I'll put it in the Instant Pot and I'll just season a salt and pepper, put about a half a cup of water in there. And it's a nice small sized portion of the roast, but still a significant for some, for some reason, pork roast, like a little goes a long way. That's how I feel about it. You don't need a whole lot for for it to actually hit you. So, anyways, salt, pepper, an instant pot, about a half cup of water, about uh, an hour and a half in, in, the, in the, the meat setting or the pressure cook meat setting. And then I'll allow it to naturally sort of, after it's cooked, let it kind of stay pressurized and just allow it to come down in temp so that I can eventually you know extract it from the instant pot and um, what I used to do is I used to finish the roast off and you know pull pull the roast apart with with a couple forks you know pull pork right and I'll take some of that the liquid that's in the pot and I'll add it to the pulled pork that way you know there's some good moisture it doesn't dry out um that's what i used to do and lately what i'm having to do is just pull the meat out and not worry about any of that liquid and you know if you recall on a previous episode i talked about using the instant pot to cook pork belly so unlike that i'm not worried about saving a whole lot of pork fat in this sort of remaining liquid from this uh, pork shoulder Um, so I'll I'll, I'll have the whole roast intact and I just let it cool to sort of room temp and then I'll maybe even refrigerate it overnight and it'll it'll firm up and you know, so the, so the next day when it's from when it's cool and firmed up, I'll actually slice it into nice pork shoulder slices. You know, it's it's pretty firm, so it'll kind of stay intact. It won't crumble, you know, l- like it would have had I started to try and cut into it right after the instant pot. And um, because a little goes a long way, I'll then portion out these slices in you know in a vacuum seal and freeze cooked pork shoulder and um but that's what i had done and um, i'm bringing it up because every once in a while i'll go into the pantry whatever the kitchen cabinet and see what kind of spices and seasonings we need to restock on or that we that i forgot about 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, and we have a lot of stuff in there. And just because we have it doesn't mean we always use it. It kind of you know, depends on how I feel, what my mood is. And, on, and uh, the other day I pulled out some of the pulled pork um, that I had prepped. The, the pork belly, the, the pork shoulder, the, not pulled pork. It's pork shoulder, which has yet to be pulled. And uh, and I pulled out from the, the kitchen cabinet uh, a little container of Eat Happy Kitchen's um, barbecue dust. And I put a lot of it on. And it was so good. So, so good. I mean, I could have seasoned it and then stuck it in the Instant Pot. But I think I would have lost a lot of it when, you know, with all that moisture, it would have just, it would have just mostly gone it back into that liquid that I eventually would have dumped. So, <laughs> so that was, that was really good. And then more recently, last night, oh man, recently, last night, I, uh, I had a, a package of New York, New, New York steaks, uh, from Costco. And, uh, God, it was so good. Um, they're nice, thick steaks. And I remember when we sh- when my wife and I were shopping, I looked at it and was like, okay, all right, looks good. But then in the past, I've gotten the, the prime rib steaks. But, man, it's like an extra 20 bucks. <laughs> it's like, eh. And these New York steaks were pretty thick so I took took the New York steaks you know there's like four big steaks in a package and so last night I um I took two out and they were they were ready to, they were ready to go the other two I just guess I vacuum sealed them and for for later <laughs> stuck them in the freezer but I just simply took these New York steaks put them on a hot I have a gas grill in the back put them on gas grill without anything you know no seasoning nothing went like four or five minutes and then I rotated it on the same side just for the grill marks another four or five minutes and then I flipped it over to the other side another four or five minutes then ro- then I rotated it on that la- that second side for the grill marks and quickly took it out once that was done and had it rest and just you know I'm not trying to get complicated except for the grill markings <laughs> so I didn't have like I didn't use like a a thermometer or anything <laughs> so so I was like as, as I, after it rested and I cut right into it I was praying like oh god please don't be overdone <laughs> please don't be overdone right came out perfect oh my god came out so perfect and I sliced it up you know and had a slice I'm like that's good then I sprinkled a little bit of sea salt on it I'm like oh that's also good then you know I cut up more pieces and I shared it with uh, with uh, we had some guests over and uh, yum 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 I still have some left over I'm gonna I had I had a little bit I had like four slices uh, midday uh, the next day and uh yeah so good stuff not complicated nothing fancy not a like a not like a you know seven ingredient recipe <laughs> with multiple steps it's just throw meat over a fire <laughs> right cut meat eat meat yum ah <sighs> anyways how are you guys doing i'm uh i'm kind of dealing with uh, some kind of low level pain on my back kind of and it's kind of moving its way a little lower toward my 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 uh my sides my hip you know my 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 upper ass (laughs) yeah and you know i don't have any it's not muscular i don't think and I think it's tied to um, my ketosis. Like I am, I'm a little, 
over a month sort of on a you know low carb you know sort of situation and i've been tracking my blood ketones and glucose and you know just trying to make sure that you know i move as far away as type 2 diabetic as possible and my most recent results i had another set of um blood work done and and um I'm still kind of in the pre-diabetic sort of realm, I think. I did improve my A1Cs. Um, I want to say like two points. I went from like a 6.1 to a 5.9, if that even makes any sense. I, I've rarely paid attention, but I figured let's pay attention. So when I, uh, a month ago when I had blood work done on a well visit, I had like a 6.1. And I figured let's go see what happens after I kind of get strict with my nutrition and diet and you know go low carb not imp- not completely low carb i mean completely zero carb because i'll still have on occasion i'll have berries right and with my heavy cream and you know i've cut rice entirely no breads no crackers none of that stuff but you know i'll have kimchi i'll have the fermented cabbage and there's level of carbs in there so i can't say i'm zero carb but I am definitely um, meat and fish. Oh yeah, and uh, butter and coconut oil in my coffee. So I've been a little over a month with that. But my thought was, okay, after those those first lab bits of last lab work, I'll go clean. How my perception of clean in the direction away from you know the high blood sugar stuff. I'll go clean for a month and then I'll get retested and see how that impacts my A1Cs. My physician's assistant says it wouldn't make a difference. I mean, much, there isn't going to be much there. But, I mean, I think two points is not that bad. I That still leaves me in sort of the pre-diabetic range, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the 5.9, at least the reference ranges I was looking at. But that was just one month of dietary change and some pretty good exercise. So, you know... So, so it is what it is. <laughs> uh, so back to like this low level discomfort, this pain that I'm dealing with that I suspect has to do with ketosis. Um, I think it has to do with sort of this phenomenon called keto rash or whatever. And to me, it's like the rash without the rash. So it's like tingly and sensitive and 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 you know at the skin layer and and something else i can think about it's not like muscular it's not like you know like oh my god i overworked my shoulders and my back and you know whenever i move a certain way it's it this is more like like my wife will like touch me on my back and i'll be like ugh and i don't like that i mean i like my wife touching me but i don't like the the, the what's going on with my the, my skin and you know several years ago when i was pretty deep in ketosis as well and pretty i think i was practically zero carb back then you know i dealt with a different sort of keto rash that uh was like dead center no no no. where was it it was um it was on my side right and that wasn't that wasn't the first time actually there was a, another time where you know, I had, this was like the first significant nutritional shift, um, a little bit, uh, I want to say it was in 2013, man, and and I had this rash and it was like the dead center of my back. That was the first one. The second, then the second time, second go around, it was on my side, like my ribs area. And I remember that experience it sort of seemed to travel. It would move. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Reminds me of a scene in some movie where some guy had a mole that, over the course of the movie, the mole, the gigantic mole on his face, traveled to different locations of his face. There's one scene it's on his chin. Another scene it's on his it's on his cheek. Hilarious. But yeah, this rash back then did that. But this go around, I suspect it still is that without the rash. 
just uncomfortable. It's not itchy, it's just uncomfortable. And it does take its toll because it's low level and it just rides you, you know, just so, you know. And I, the reason why I think it's focused all over my back is, you know, I s- sleep pretty good on my back now. That second time it was on my side, on my rib, I slept predominantly on my side, on that side. And then the very first time also I was, you know, on my back. Um, so I couldn't find any information on this keto rash thing that had to do with things like, you know, it being like this low level discomfort on the skin. You know, I can't find anything about it, um, where it comes or where it presents itself has to do with what side you sleep on or maybe what side gets the most sort of heat. Cause you know, when I'm sleeping pretty good, you know, my temperature could rise or I'm c- covered up and the part that's pressed up against the mattress is probably going to get the most heat. So I wonder if there's something about around that. I mean, the only way I can test it is if I do it again and I just lay on my front <laughs> the whole time and then see if I start getting this problem on my front. Yeah. Anyways. Um, you know, but I'm going to manage. I'm going to deal with it. My mistake last time was I lost patience having to deal with the rash. And I wasn't getting answers other than start eating carbs again. And back then I was still drinking. So that suddenly went the wrong direction you know greater abundance of carbs and lost control and then other things you know just so you know i and and since then i wondered if i were to go through it again would i've just tried to be more patient with the process and and uh maybe you know, wrote it out longer to see. As long as it didn't get any worse, it, if it traveled, then it means it's getting better in some spots, but it's affecting other spots. So, it may, you know, if it travels, uh, I'll I'll report back, and it'll be a learning experience. And and you know, maybe I'll actually do some meaningful podcast episode notes that I could reference and say, hey, this episode covers some of my personal experience with ketosis and suspected keto rash so that if somebody's trying to go through this process and they're experiencing some weirdness maybe you know they'll stumble upon this stuff and find out uh we know that they're not the only one so yeah i'll report back meanwhile you know exercise wise um nutritional nutrition wise you know all of it it's great yeah, I just reported in the in the in the NSNG Facebook group that you know in the in the in in a month's time I've come down seven pounds, which is not bad, right? I mean, a stable seven pounds, not like oh, you know, I just had a jug of water and suddenly you know I pissed it all out and now I'm I'm light again. You know, it's not, not nothing like that, and you know. I I feel if my if if my body allows me to um I'd love to get down 15 pounds more, right? And so 7 pounds in the past month, you know, is not bad if you break it up how many pounds a week. Not that bad, right? I'm a little over a pound a week. But I, I mean, I do realize that weight loss isn't you know, a straight line, you know, it, it's, it's a wonky line <laughs> and now I want to do it smart. You know, I'm, I want, I want to do it where I'm not depriving myself. Like, Oh, I got to fast. I got to fast like a hundred hours, you know, yeah. and that's stupid stuff. I, I do implement fasting. I do implement eating, you know, what I found and understand to be higher density nutrition foods like steak and sardines and getting um organs through supplementation you know so 
you know, and, and when I really feel crummy and I really listen to my body and it says, you know what, you need something that's a little bit on the sweet side. And that's where I go to frozen blueberries with some heavy cream. Um, yeah. And I'm, and as far as, um, as far as hydration and electrolytes, I'm pretty good there because I, like I mentioned before, I, I'll take a capsule of, of pure vitamin clubs, ultra salt, and it's got all those minerals and salts and things that I need for, you know, and I'll just break open a capsule, stick it in the water, shake it up. And, you know, I've got mineral water, you know, I've got salts and stuff. So, you know, I don't hold back on the salt. So yeah, pretty good. That's that. Um, family wise, you know, yesterday had a birthday celebration at the pool, at a pool that uh, we rented for two of the kids. It was fun. It was a great day. Um, it was really good. And, um, yeah, pretty blessed. The kids are getting older and, um, you know, they're, they, they, they've developed their own circle of friends and handful of them for each of the kids made it. Even my oldest kid had some friends over, had relatives there, other adult friends. So it was good. It was a good, good break. And the kids had a lot of fun, um, kind of, kind of tired of it. Tired, not tired of it. That's the wrong way to say it. I'm kind of, we're kind of exhausted from the effort because we, we set up canopies and backdrops and tables and coolers and 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 activity tables and all that stuff you know and we're lots of stuff to move from vehicle to vent to the the pool the event area and and then to tear down and head back home a lot of stuff and it included weights because there were parts of the day where it was pretty windy so i brought like two 25 pound dumbbells <laughs> You know, a 15 pound kettlebell you know some random random things that I would use to try and hold things from being blown away anyways yeah um what else what else what else um no just just that's all I got yeah it's another short one thanks for tuning in guys thanks for listening catch you on the other one on the next one go out run something bye Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast. Yeah.